on a gigantic ship like an aircraft carrier. It takes about 18,000 meals to feed the entire crew of more than 5,000 people every single day. And all these 18,000 meals, well excuse my French, turn into lots and lots of number one and number two. Adding to that, there's a massive quantity of wastewater from showers, sinks, and laundry. In total, the entire crew generates the staggering amount of 410,000 gallons of sewage water each day. All the sewage water runs throughout an incredibly long track of pipes, 250 miles long. It covers all the ship's 493 toilets and multiple shower facilities plus the galleys. If something bad happens to those 250 miles of pipe, it's like dropping the anchor, especially when you have thousands of people that are constantly feeding them. There's a total of 15,000 pounds of waste processed daily on a carrier. And a striking fact is that the galley alone generates the most garbage. 70% of the ship's trash comes from the kitchen, and almost half of the total plastic waste generated aboard. The activity in the galley almost never stops. The job the 115 cooks do every day seems like a magical coordination. It's very much like a mass production in an oversized restaurant kitchen. And it may be the second most exclusive restaurant in the world, after submarines. Food is one of the most important things in a sailor's life. A good meal helps boost morale, since they work long hours in difficult conditions. But when it comes to fresh water usage, all Navy ships when at sea have a very strict rule about fresh water and showering. A shower can't last more than five minutes. It's called a Navy shower or a military shower. You get wet, then turn off the water and soap up once you're wet, then rinse off. In an extent way they consider fresh water as ammunition. And anything beyond those five minutes spent while washing up is considered a Hollywood shower where you use continually running water and is approved only when they're in a port with easy access to fresh water. The older generation Nimitz class aircraft carriers have a system on board that cannot destroy plastic aboard either. Here sailors have to use traditional compression melt units, but these melting units only reduce the plastic's volume by creating plastic pucks. The problem with these pucks is they keep piling up and have to be stored on board. This is eating up valuable storage space that could otherwise be used for food or ammunition. So the carrier has to transfer them while conducting underway replenishments, costing it valuable time. Either way, the ship is forced to reduce the flight operations, simply because it's unable to destroy plastic aboard. On the other hand, pulpable materials such as paper and food waste, excluding bones and fruit pits, are shredded, pulped and sliced into a 12mm diameter, and then pushed over the side. There are only 16 sailors that process the entire crew's waste. They work in a tight cramped space with humid air, and heavy odor. But they keep their sense of humor and call themselves raccoons because they dig through everybody's trash. Before it gets to them, all the ship's trash has to be sorted first since they process each type of waste in a different way. So everyone on the ship has to do their part. If the trash is incorrectly sorted, it delays the processing. Plus it can damage the equipment and again delaying the process. So the sailors working in the waste room have to double check first if the waste was sorted correctly. Also, there are roughly 30 engineering duty officers that maintain the waste room 24-7 for 100% functionality. Nimitz ships can destroy some of the trash with its onboard incinerator, like wood, old rags and uniforms, textiles, magazines, and boots. And where is fire there is smoke, which interferes with flight operations. And dealing with poo is extremely tricky when you're in the middle of the ocean and have limited space. Even though it's pretty obvious that they get rid of it, this is a process that is a lot more complicated than you might think, because they can't just throw it into the sea. Nimitz carriers have a system on board that collects the sewage and wastewater from toilet sinks and from other sources on the ship. It is called a marine sanitation device and is basically a sewage treatment plant. The human waste is collected and then treated in tanks where harmful bacteria and other contaminants are removed. The treated water is disinfected first and only then is discharged into the ocean, at least 12 nautical miles from shore. A toilet outage can actually put to a stop an aircraft carrier, so it's beyond doubt that the ship's sewage system is crucial, and it has to work perfectly. But unfortunately things not always slide so smoothly. There was doo-doo and pee-pee all over the place on the US Navy's two newest aircraft carriers, the George H.W. Bush and Gerald R. Ford. All their toilets went offline because the pipes were frequently clogging. And there wasn't a backup plan, so sailors had to urinate into the showers and industrial sinks at their workstations. Some male sailors had to use bottles and empty them overboard. And some female sailors developed health issues because they were holding it for so long. 
You see both carriers use a vacuum system with a reduced amount of water. But because the pipes are too narrow for when a bunch of sailors flush the toilet at the same time, the suction system frequently crashes. So to get them working again they had to flush the entire system with lots of cash. Exactly $400,000 worth of specialized acids. Plus, to avoid another toilet outage, they will have to repeat this expensive process throughout the ship's entire service life. And when their restrooms do work, all the poop generated on the US Navy's latest generation supercarrier is vaporized by plasma, which completely obliterates the waste at extremely high temperatures, from 3,600 to 25,200 degrees Fahrenheit. The Gerald R. Ford uses cutting-edge technology to transform trash into vapor, it is called Plasma Arc Waste Destruction System, or PODS, and it can destroy at a stunning speed almost all trash generated on the carrier. Aside from the sewage water, PODS can destroy more than 400 pounds of trash an hour. Metal, plastic, paper, food and wood. Plus, an incredibly important detail is that the plasma system doesn't generate smoke, and this allows sailors to destroy the trash even during flight operations. The plasma generates only a non-viscous vapor that is more environmentally friendly primarily made up of hydrogen and carbon monoxide. But out of the total of 11 carriers that the U.S. Navy currently has in service, the Gerald R. Ford is the only one that uses plasma to destroy the waste. So the plasma's capability to destroy the trash actually enhances the carrier's war power. With no trash stored on board, she simply gains time at sea to perform her missions. The Navy is required to follow strict regulations worldwide for the disposal of all garbage and human waste. In fact, all ships at sea are required to follow strict regulations for the disposal of garbage and human waste. And aircraft carriers are no exception. Out at sea everything they do has an impact on the environment. But the only exceptions to these strict laws are to ensure the safety of the ship, the health of the crew or to save a life at sea. By 2058. All carriers will be equipped with the Plasma Arc Waste Destruction System. The current Nimitz class will be replaced on a one-for-one -one basis by the latest generation supercarrier, the Gerald R. Ford class. Currently four plasma systems have been contracted by the U.S. Navy. One is fully running on the USS Gerald R. Ford. And three new other carriers in the Gerald R. Ford class will utilize the system in the future. It's very clear to understand that it's not an easy task to keep this floating city that operates in the middle of the ocean from turning into a floating island of waste. Improper disposal can cause environmental and health concerns and massive fines for the ship.